Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our uh, lineup build for the MMA slate for uh, Saturday, uh, December 2nd. Uh, that's either today or tomorrow, depending on when you're watching this. Um, so I mentioned that I was going to do this DFS breakdown in two parts. One, we're going to talk about their plays, and the other, we're going to talk about lineup builds. We are going to focus almost exclusively on lineup builds and have a little bit of fun with this. Um because the art of building lineups for MME and for other types of contests is very, uh, it's, 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 I enjoy it quite a bit. I enjoy experimenting and you're going to watch me do that and give you some ideas of how to, you know, take advantage of your knowledge of what the good plays are. I mean, it's not, I don't want to be dismissive, but it's not difficult to know what the good plays are, you know, especially at this late juncture in the week. I mean, like to, just to review, I mean, we could, you could talk about the good underdogs. I mean, they're really live. You're getting line value out of, I mean, Davis and Figueredo is probably the easiest long shot, easiest underdog to play. He's like plus 110, he's 7,200 or something like that. So that's him. Jared Gooden has some good money line odds, plus some uh, some uh, some finishing upside. And you have, what's his name? Uh, what's her name? Uh, Misha Tate, who's almost a pick She's you know, eight, what, 7,500, something like that. So all those are very, very reasonable looking underdogs. And they're all obviously really, really good plays. Uh, in the mid-range, the you have two very similar looking fights, the Brady Gastelum fight, as well as the Selecki close fight. But it's obvious that the better plays are the grapplers, right? So Brady and uh, and Selecki are very, very good plays. Okay. Um, the main event, I mean, Sarukin is a good play. Uh and then these are obvious bad plays, you know, you know Hardy uh, and, and Jamie Lynn Horth, objectively just bad plays. Um, you have Bellato, good play. Uh, Pateria, not so much because just doesn't win often. Uh, Brundage is probably a, a good live underdog as well. So Brundage is probably a good play. He's got a good money line and very, very strong inside the distance line. So good play. Um, Soriano, good play. Stolf is not. Guida Silva, Silva, good play, Guida not. Um, so it's not difficult to come up with the good plays, but how are we going to put all these in lineups? Okay, so like, if, for example, I mean, if you wanted to play something, I mean, like, where's my 555? Let me pull this up. Let's just pretend this is the 555 for the time being. I mean, you could you could build a lineup with, I mean, you'd probably start with Figueredo, and then let's say you play the two wrestlers, Brady, and then you played um, who's the other one? Uh, Selecki, and then either of these under underdogs work, you know, whether it's Tate or want well, a little more upside, you could play Gooden maybe, but this is all fine. And then you can play like the two studs right at the top, like really easy. You play Bellato and then Sarukian, even leave 500 on the table. I mean, this is this is a good line, you know, it's not difficult to do this, but. This is going to be dudes. I mean, this is a lot of people are going to play this. Um, so you have to decide whether, you know, whether you want to play stuff like this in the contest that you're playing. You know, is is this even good enough to play in like the 555? You know, there's a lot of experts are going to be in this. So I, I probably have to do something a little bit different if I want to play the 555, um, which I'm going to. This is going to be way too chalky for me. Um, so I could do a pivot. I probably am not going to pivot away from Brady to Gastelum. I would rather probably pivot to something that's kind of like an objectively a, a good play. That's just not one of these guys. Like maybe, you know, I could probably do instead of Gooden, you could play Tate. You know, that's, that's certainly reasonable. Okay. This is, this is obvious. This is probably even going to be more popular. You want to know the truth because because it it fills up more of the salary. I mean, this type of construction, this is, I mean, this is a, a very conservative, very easy to play lineup. If you play this though in like the one hundred and fifty to try to win the whole thing, um, you're going to be very disappointed with the results because, I mean, you might get optimal and chop this with literally forty people, 50, 60 people. Um, so. What do you do about this? So the question is, how, how do you play? Like, you know who the good plays are, but that doesn't mean that that's who we're going to play, right? So what I did 
was I uploaded everything into Saberson, like all my projections and the ownerships and all of this stuff. And this, you know, takes a lot of tweaking. It takes a lot of, you know, massaging or whatever it is, but you're starting with this. All right. And this all kind of reflects what the good plays are. And the, what I'd like to do first is just kind of run 150 just with no restraints. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run them with um, uh, just using Sabre score. So we're going to 150 and we'll just hit rebuild lineups. I just, I, I'm doing this live. I literally just redid the project projections. Um, I just want to make sure that it does not take too long. Otherwise, I'm going to have to pause this. Um, yeah, it is going to take a little while. Um, whenever you deal with MMA and custom projections, it does take a while to run the 5,000. So I, I'm going to pause this until this is done because we're going to need to run this first. And then we can have some fun kind of you know, messing around with it. So I'll be right back. Right. So we ran these and the important thing is to know what we're looking at here as far as how we're ranking these. Okay. Because we know what the good plays are. We put all the projections in. We're really representing what the good plays are. And we ran 150 lineups. We actually built 5,000. But the real question is how we want to rank these. Okay. So like I can rank these by top 150 projected scores. And I promise you this, that if I put this set of 150 lineups in, you are going to be just getting duplicated all over the universe. Okay. Um, so this is not going to help us. The next thing that we want to look at is this other metric, which is ranking by uh, max uh, what's called sim diversity. Now, for some sports, this used to be a very aggressive way of, of ranking players and ranking lineups um, such that you can get real high upside, sort of low owned lineups. But when it comes to MMA, when you're using Sabersim, this is basically the baseline, okay? Like nobody does the projected score thing. The very least people are going to try to do is the Sim Diversity uh, ranking, Sim Diversity 10. So like this is not bad, okay? You rank them this way. And don't worry about the exposures. I don't want you to be biased, okay? We're, we're ranking these lineups in a certain way. Um, and if you start with this, this is okay, right? For a 150 spot. You're not really though going to get the dupe, the the uniqueness you need to really win or to compete for for solo ships or even sec or two or three duplicated lineups. You know, when you start with this metric, it's not bad, but it's just way too duped. Okay, um, whether it's because other people are doing this or whether because it's again it's it is very easy honestly to come up with what the good plays are and if you look through i mean you hear the top one guys are all the guys that we mentioned okay like honestly um and um so i would not put in like 150 with this all right the other the other metric that you have to be familiar with is this mma default okay so MMA default on SaberSim, sometimes is the default build. And this thing is like, is like crazy. Okay. So what MMA default is, uh, is, uh, it's, this is the formula. It's, it's 0.5 times this, this, this. And what this really does is it really goes for the throat. OK, it only looks for your 99th percentile lineup and it also just for adjusted ownership as well. And when you play rankings or lineups that are sorted by MMA default, you are getting uniqueness. OK, I promise you, you're getting uniqueness. You're also getting stuff that is going to make you sort of want to throw up. OK, um, like, for example. I'll show you like the MMA default. If you rate your exposures by rating by MMA default, you're getting your top owned guys are Bobby Green, Rob Font, Veronica Hardy, Julie, like the guys there and the girls that you just 
are no are objectively bad plays. But when you're dealing with 150 maxing, you have to dispense with the idea of anything being an objectively bad play. Okay. Everything in 150 max and trying to win the lottery tournaments is not really coming up with the best plays is just coming up with the plays that win or get there often enough to, to put yourselves in a position to win. Okay. Because these types of lineups are going to be unique. Okay. And it's, you know, and as long as they have a shot, these are really lineups that you want to consider and it's gross. Okay. But this type of ranking is a very valuable component to what you want to do. Now, um, should you play all 150 rated by MMA default? Um, I think that that is a little bit too aggressive. Um, but I do make the MMA default settings a component of what I like to do. So if I'm going to play 150, I'm going to play some blindly that are rated by MMA default. Okay. And that's what I'm going to do on this thing. I'm, I'm, seriously, if you look at what you have, it's going to make you sick. So you probably don't want to do it. One thing you might want to do is you might change the the number of uniques to like three or something like that, which will um, uh, spread out your risk a little bit. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. So first of all, you'll notice that if you make it three uniques, you're only even getting 143 lineups. Okay. This is out of the 5,000 total you built. You can only get 143. Um, and we're not even going to use the 143 anyway. So let's just go back to min unique two, because you already see that when you go to min unique three, you're really starting to suffer and not even be able to dip into the top 5,000. So we'll go min uniques two. What we're going to do is we're going to just play 50 of these. Okay. We're going to play 50 lineups. Now there's a couple of ways to save this. All right. Uh, you could use favorites, but I'm not going to do that. Um, first of all, let's clear the favorites anyway. So that's one thing you do with savers and save these in there, but I don't I want to I don't want to run the risk of like getting like 250 lineups and like then have to figure out which one I, I want. Um, so I'm gonna save these separately. So let's do that. We're gonna save these and I'm gonna call them MMA default. Let's 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 do all this live. Save as recent uh the MMA file, we'll call it uh MMA default 50 to remind us that we played 50 lineups and using the MMA default setting. Oh, we already have it saved. Uh, something else. MMA 50, 50. Um, we'll call it, it's 12 2. So it's December 2nd. We'll do it that. Okay. So that's 50. All right. Next thing, the next group I want to kind of play around with um, are the lineups that that are still within that first set that that mma you know sim diversity thing but i want to get a little bit unique there too so with that set i'm going to use a geo mean filter okay uh and that's really good for showdown and it's also really really good for mma and all this does is that it basically limits ownership sort of um so to calculate what that is all right. Um, we go to our spreadsheet, which is somewhere. Pull this up. Uh, Geo. I have my own spreadsheet that does this. It's a really easy one to create for yourself if you want. Um, I'll even show you the formula. But what, what we're trying to do is we're going to try to figure out what geometric mean to filter for and then filter for it. I'll get to that in a second. Let's see how many people are in this uh are in this thing, first of all, this throwdown. It's uh two thousand twenty-two thousand eight seventy-five. That's it. Oh, not a big deal. So twenty-two thousand eight hundred and seventy-five people are gonna that's really all there is in the lottery this week. I don't believe that. 
Uh, I, I guess so, though. I guess so. Um. Well, I, I I literally don't believe that. Let's 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 pull this up. I guess I'm used to like football now. Uh, yeah, 2008. All right. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that data in here into this uh, geo mean calculator. So, 22,800 is that we said? Uh, six players are in a lineup, and this we only want one dupe, like one lineup like that. And this calculates based on this formula what geometric mean you want to filter for, or what you want to limit as far as ownership goes to get you know unique. So. 18.7 is the geo mean you want to filter for. So let's put that in to this main Saberson build. Add filter, uh, geo mean, less than, we'll give it a little break, 19. Okay. And we get, oh, we can't even get it. We only get seven lineups. What if you only do min unique one? Wow, that's a that's a little disconcerting. So let's uh let's expand that a little bit. Let's give ourselves a little break. Let's uh let's do the the minimum amount of geo test or excuse me, geo mean that can get us 50 lineups. So let's uh, less than how about how about 20? Do that. Nope, 28 lineups. And then we'll try again. Geo mean less than 21. And there you go. All right. So just to let us know what we're, we're in for here. So if we're using a geo mean of 21, that means that I guess on average or whatever. Uh, yeah. So two to three dupes, that's fine. Okay. So uh, geo mean 21. So these 50 lineups that we created are from the original pool of, you know, MMA Sim Diversity, but we are filtering them, but for uniqueness. So we're playing 50 lineups from here and putting these in. So again, we're gonna, not gonna put these in favorites. We're going to save these to an SC, a CSV. And we're gonna save these as, um, we're gonna call this, uh, Geo mean 23, was it? Geo mean 20? We're going to call this geo mean, well, we'll call it 50 because it's 50, 50 lineups. And then it's 12, 2, right? December 2nd. All right, good. Okay. So that's 50 more lineups. Now you might be thinking, well, you think there's any, any crossover between those two? Ah, we're going to get to that in a minute. All right. So now we're going to do one other thing. And this is what I like doing is, okay, so how, how do you get unique in MMA? How do you get different? Well, one is to, you know, make bad plays. And when I say bad plays, I say that almost lovingly. You know what I mean? Like make suboptimal plays, get unique. That's certainly worth, worth thinking about. Secondly is, 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 is limiting ownership artificially, which is what we did. And the other thing you can do is to uh, leave money on the table, all right? Because you can leave money on the table and not technically filter for ownership. You know what I mean? Because you could get like 20% on underdogs, but then still leave like a whole bunch of money on the table and that lineup itself is going to be unique. Um, so what we can do with that is now we can start talking about uh, the good plays, Okay. And so what I want to do now is do another build. We will do a uh, new build. We're going to re-upload the projections. And we're going to do one little thing here. Well, a couple of things. First, we're going to save all this. And now we're going to just X out what we consider the bad plays. And keep in what we consider the good plays, like Pateria, no. And I'm not talking about leverage or anything like that, okay? Just we thought were good plays. So Brown Ninja Stall was good. Stolfitz was not good. Guido was no good. Gooden was good. Hardy was no good. Uh, Dariush, I didn't even have an opinion on. We'll just kind of keep him in for now. 
Bobby Green, what do we say? He was no good. Uh, Tate was a good play. Not Gaston, but Selecki was good. Figueroa, uh, Figgy was good. Font was not. Uh, Avila was not. Brady, yes. Close, no. No Horth, no Termon. Turner was a good play. Silva was a good play. Reese new play. Seriano, Bellato, Armand. Okay. So, um, and we have Brundigen. So we we don't have that many many fighters here, but what I want to do is first of all let's just make sure that we're not using uh that's what I'm looking for. Um, I don't want two fighters. I don't want opposing fighters. And what I want to do here is I want to make lineups of just the good plays, but with these guys leave money on the table on purpose. Okay. Now there's two ways to do this. One is to leave money on the table at the beginning of the process, or you could start by not leaving money on the table and filter after. What I prefer is to start by without, without leaving money on the table and filter after. This way, at least I know I'm getting from, you know, a good pool of lineups. Like if there's a whole bunch of them. Now it turns out, I don't know how many combinations of these are even going to exist. Um, uh, I got all the good underdogs in, right? Uh, Figu Figuero, Tate, Darius, and Gooden, and Brundage. So let's build, um, uh, and if I have to pause it, I will. We'll build 50, or we'll build 5,000. Uh, but we're going to leave uh, at least 1,000 on the table. So we have 48,900 max salary, no minimum. And then we are going to build the lineups. Boom. And if it's going to take a little bit, a little while, I'll pause this and we'll come back to it. Let's see how long this is taking. Yeah. So it looks like it's taking a little while. I don't know how many combinations there are. They're going to be of this. So let's just give it a minute. And if it does look like it's really taking a long time, I will go into pause and then come back. Just give it a minute though. And again, I promise you that if we get like too many lineups and we have duplicate, du duplicative lineups, meaning that, you know, let's say the same lineup appears in like two different screens, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll filter for that. All right. Ooh, is this it? Only 361. That would actually be very helpful. Okay, good. So there's only 361 candidate lineups that can be made out of these, what I consider good plays. And as you might imagine, Figueroa, Figgies at the top of the list, Tate, Gooden, you know, all the top top underdogs. So how are we going to rank these? Well, we're not going to rank them by projected score, obviously. We're going to rate them by sim diversity. And there are a couple of ways we could do this. We could just rate these by MMA default for openers. So what does that look like? So we can rate it by MMA default. It's going to be like a very similar type of set because here we're only dealing with 362, okay? Um, but this is getting a little greedy because not only is it is it putting 50, leaving 1,100 on the table, but it's also going into that really aggressive MMA default mode. So I think we can sort by sim diversity. We're leaving 58.9 on the table anyway. Um and let's use these as the, the 50. Now, can we go min unique two? I doubt it. No, not quite. So we'll do min unique one. So this will be the other, the last of the 150, at least for now. We might have to add some, and I'll show you why in a minute. But um, let's, uh, no, we're not saving this. Let's uh, download these CSV. And what we're going to call these are, I guess, best plays. Uh, Let's call these best plays set 58 nine. Okay. Um, best plays or core, um, core 50, because 50 lineups and then 12, 22. Um, okay. So now what I want to do is I want to compile all these lineups together to, for my 150. And hopefully you have. 50 plus 50 plus 50, 150 completely different lineups. I, that usually doesn't happen. So let's put all these together. So this was the first file. 
Let's get the second one up. Uh, actually, let's pull up this. Um, where is that? Where's my MMA? Okay. So uh, we're going to start with uh, this core one here. We'll add the geo mean lineups to that. We'll add the GeoMe lineups to that. Boom. And then we will add the MMA default lineups, those really aggressive lineups to that. All right. So this, 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 and then this. Boom. And so here's 150 lineups, okay? But we don't know if there's any duplicates duplicates in here of themselves, right? We did three different screens. Maybe they 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 overlap. They usually don't overlap by that much, but there's a little tool that I created that I can adjust for that, that I can search for that. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take these 150 and put it in my duplicate finder sheet. I'll show you what that looks like. And now you know why I think there's a huge difference between uh, just the plays and, and figuring out how to use them. This is really hard. Um, where is it? My And again, you could use the favorites tab to sort of do this, but it's not exactly the same. Kind of hard to explain. So what I'm doing is I'm entering these, put these 150 lineups in this kind of duplicate filter. And what this is going to do, it's like a macro that I've kind of created that's going to make sure that these guys aren't the same at all. So we're going to remove duplicate lineups and let's just see if there are any dupes within here. So let's take a look. Yeah. So there are 17 lineups that appeared in like multiple screens. So they get disappeared. So the all the lineups I'm left with are, I have 133 lineups right now. So I need to add 17 lineups to this set. So how do I want to do that? Okay. How do I want to do that? I could either, I could either, I could do a couple of things. First, I could go back to one of my screens and say, you know, I just prefer to get more of the, uh, of the MMA defaults or whatever. And I think that's what I'm going to do. You'll, you'll remember that in um, this last screen I did, when I did just the best plays, and I got to the 50 line, so, and I was wondering whether I should sort by MMA default or by sim diversity. And I thought MMA default was a little too aggressive. But now that I know I need more lineups anyway, let's uh, let's do some more. Let's let's maybe do another, uh, what do I need, another 17? I don't know. Let's see if 17 does it. Let's build, uh, let's take the top 17 lineups that were now, again, the best plays that are giving up, leaving 1,100 on the table, that's also sorted by MMA default. And we'll take those lineups. And we'll put those at the bottom of this of this uh, dupe test filter here. And now let's again search and see now if there are how many dupes we have. Are there any? Only four, okay? So now we have unique, we have 146. So all we need is four more lineups, okay? To get 150 unique. So again, where are those four going to come from? We could duplicate, you know, we could just make dupes and then just go ahead and, you know, and then just kind of tweak. But let's let's get a little more exact. Let's make another four, of this, which I kind of like. So let's, uh, again, we'll, we'll download those. And let's see if that does the trick. Let me just put these here. It's going to get those dupes again. And we'll search here. Remove dupes. And there should be about 20 over here now. Yep. And now we're getting a full 150 lineups. So we're going to put these into our actual set. 
And again, this is hopefully giving you guys some ideas of your own. I mean, I, I really enjoy Saber Sim. It gives you a lot of different, gives you a lot of different ways to 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 build here. And we will go ahead and put those in the 150. Now we didn't need to do with the big deal with the big buy-ins yet. But I'm going to save those four. And what I'm going to do is let's 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 just just so that we can save something so I can identify them. Let's put these over here, just so I can find them, the big buy-ins. And let's uh, save this. We'll put these in and we should be good. Now you'll you'll notice I haven't even checked to see what my exposures are yet. You wanna know why? Cause I'm a little scared, but I don't care. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like you can't worry about that. At the end, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I have, but, um, but, uh, it's not that big of a deal. You know, I already went through the process. I think I have like a whole carload of Sarukian, by the way. Um, but, you know, I'm sure of this, a lot of uncomfortable exposures, which we'll get to, right? So how are we going to deal with these big buy-ins? Well, one thing that we didn't do, just so that you know, is that we never really use the contest sims. Um, and I'm not saying that you can't or you shouldn't, but we just, we just didn't. Um, so we may as well just to, to show you guys what that would look like. All right, let's go back to the original build of like 150 lineups sorted by sim diversity, which is your really your baseline thing. Like that's where you should really start. Let's see what that would look like. You know, for example, if and this is another way you could do it. Okay, you should start well. We put our contest sim settings in here. We were the, the 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 lottery. We have the five fifty five, and we have three entries into the qualifier. And let's run the contest sims, and then let's see what those builds will look like. And again, I don't I don't know where I stand yet with the um, uh, how aggressively to use contest sims versus my own kind of like my own kind of like mad scientist way of building. But it is interesting to see what this kind of approach would look like. And what I will do, at least for now, is use the contest sims to get my big buy and stuff. So, okay. So if I were going to resort all this by, say, the lottery, I would sort by of risk-adjusted ROI. And you don't really see that much of a difference between that and the, the sim diversity. I barely noticed any difference, actually. See that? I mean, there's very little difference here. Still getting all the Sarukian and Figueredo, Blotto, Rescreen. And again, even with the using the, the Sims, it's really not that much of a difference, honestly. Um, now, what you could do is, like, from this point, you could do the same type of filtering that we did before. Like, you could filter down to... Uh, a geo mean of less than 20 or something like that from this set having already run the contest sims and that that makes some degree of sense also so if instead of playing the 50 pure the way i did before i could have waited until i ran the contest sims and then ran my 50 uh using you know the geo mean thing or using the the, the mma default or, or whatever okay like so for example here you can't sort by MMA default because we've already sorted by right by 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 this. I'm curious to see what the the uh, the qualifier lineups look like, just for the hell of it. See, this is kind of neat. Uh, I am actually going to use the contest sim recommendations for the uh, for the bigger buy-ins. Um, I just don't feel comfortable enough to know exactly how much, how different to get against these top players. So I am going to use the contest sims to help me with those. So we only, we have three entries in that. So we're just going to just put these in just like this. So three entries into the satellite. But then again, this doesn't really help because, uh, well, it does because I have to. 
I only want to add to this. I don't want to screw up what I already put in. Um, I think this is going to work. Let's add that to this. And then let's put in the uh, information for the, 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 the 555. And this looks totally reasonable. It might even be too chalky, but we'll put this in for now. Good. And then let's uh let's download these and we'll upload. I'm pretty sure that I didn't screw anything up, but just, just to be on the safe side, um, just to be on the safe side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repaste those those one those that, that 150 set that I had before. You know what I mean? Just to make sure that I that I have this all right. Because I'm still not a hundred percent well versed in the editor. I just want to make sure that it didn't replace something with an old set. So once again, we'll go back to here. And then let's go back into that um whatchamacallit file that um where was it? The uh the dupe thing, the dupe test. Yeah. And let's uh let's let's re take these, put those back in here, and paste. Now, and this is going to be like kind of anathema to like what you guys usually do, but I think you'll notice and you'll see that I don't have any lineups that are in both the big buy-ins or and the lottery. So like, and I know what you guys are thinking, well, why wouldn't you just, if you're playing the 555, why don't you just drop that in the lottery? And, and, and that is, again, I, I get it. And, and it happens with all sports, okay? Um, people, you get worried that, oh, what if my cash lineup would have won the million? It it, it won't. Right? Just, just don't worry about it. It just won't. Um, make sure that you're just playing the right lineups in the right contests. And I think we've done a really good job of that. Now, do you want to see what the exposures look like as a result of all this? Probably not. <laughs> um, but we can just we can just know that we played 150 lineups, 50 one way, 50 another way, 50 another way. And it's all reflected. Number one, our opinions. And number two, it allowed the math to come up with good non-duplicated approaches. Um, so how do we want to do this? Let's, um, just so I have it, I want to upload my contests. Yeah, I want to upload the my new... Um, the new uh, lineups to Saberson so that it has it. Yeah. And we can actually tell from here what we have. So in the 150, just so you know, um, players in the, in the 150, our top own guy is Sarukian, then Soriano, then Font, very interesting. Gooden, Tate, Selecki, Terman, very over on Terman. And the guys we're really low on are you're pretty uh, reasonable guys to be low on, if you want to know the truth. So it's pretty neat. I mean, we didn't go that far off the beaten path. I mean, we don't have that much Bellotto. Listen, we can't have everybody. Um, but uh, I think this is a uh, – this is a uh, – this is a cool uh, a cool set of 150 if you want to know the truth. So uh again, there there's other things that you could do. There's other ways that you could use this. Um, but hopefully this gave you at least some ideas of how you could use Saberson to help you build lottery lineups. Um, because it's just a totally different type of game. Um one other one other tweak I'll give you for this uh for this particular slate which you could do. I'm, I'm just kind of not in the mood. But what you could do is if you really like, um, there was one guy I wanted to focus on. And I, for those of you that have seen my work before, you probably know what I'm going to say already. But if you like, say, um, not Brady, the other one in the close fight, um, Selecki. Okay. If you like Selecki, you'll note that he's going to be a pretty – pretty high owned. I mean, he's 25% owned. What you could do if you want to play Selecki, and let's just say that you're the type that say, you know, I just want 30% of it. 
what you do is is you take him and you make sure you leave 400 on the table. And and the reason why you'll see that even though you know select has got higher upside than close, close is still showing a higher median projection. So optimizers are going to get to him to close more. They just are. Unless there are lineups that have been specifically identified to play Selecki, for example. Um, if if you have another lineup that has, say, 8,300 left, it's always going to take close, right? Um, because he projects for more. So if you force your Selecki lineups to have 400 on the table, you're going to have a lot more differentiation in your Selecki lineups. And that goes for any like underdog that you like that you think is popular. Like, like, well, Misha Tate's not quite the same, um, but oh, sort of. I mean, Misha Tate's twenty percent owned, so she's pretty popular. I mean, if you want, you could, you know, play her and leave what's Avila uh, eighty-seven and leave twelve hundred on the table. You know, if you want to get away from some Misha Tate chalk, but you think she's a good play anyway. I mean, that's the way to do it. You leave 1,200 on the table with her lineups. And then likewise, uh, some of the other underdogs that are not that, you know, that unlikely to win. Like, I mean, if you want to even play like Figueredo and leave like, what, what's it going to be? Like 1,800 on the table or something like that? Or, you know, to 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 not play, um, who, is he, who is he against Font? Um, and leave 1,400 on the table. That's a good way to play um, some figure eight lineups. And then even though he's going to be chalky, you could make your lineups less chalky by leaving the 1400 on the table. Cause those are those 1400s will almost always go to font. Okay. Um, that'll be for like a different day for a different line of construction. Um, uh, but I think that I don't think we had some fun with this one. And, uh, will I do this again in the morning? Maybe I'm going out for most of the day. So, it might be the end of it, but we'll see how it goes. And that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody.